Good morning and welcome to the Gospel of this morning. We are going to carry on with the theme of the Holy Spirit. We were talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost last time and we were talking about the fruit of the Holy Spirit and now we will begin to speak about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Yes, it seems to be a never-ending theme in the house of God. Um, and he has so much for us, that is the Lord, that it will carry us through the rest of our lives. We'll never finish with God. It's an ongoing, wonderful process of growth. Now, the last week we spoke about this baptism of the Holy Spirit. We took a step with the Lord into a greater dimension. The power of the Holy Ghost brings us to a level of able service. Yes. And to keep us out of the realm of despair. And, and, and yet there is more than just the baptism and speaking in the prayer time. This baptism brings with it a dimension of powerful ministry uh, with signs following. Out of this experience we can now enter into the gift of or the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now I want to start with uh, scripture straight away because it is the Bible that can testify of truth. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Now Paul doesn't want to leave the brethren in ignorance as far as the gifts of the Holy Spirit are concerned. Therefore we want to give the subject plenty, plenty, plenty of space. To ignore something that takes up almost two chapters of the Bible would be rather stupid. Now, everything that has been documented in our Bible is God-inspired and good for building up the church. Right at the beginning, Paul uses language that leaves no doubt about the importance of the subject, but it all has to do with Jesus. The gifts of the Holy Spirit can only operate within the body of Christ. Among the believers, anything else is motivated by demons or by self. Right. Of course, there has been abuse all over the place and, 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 and it is terrible and it leaves a bad mark upon Christianity. Now verse 3 says, Wherefore I give you to understand that no man, speaking by the Spirit of God, by the Holy Ghost, calls Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Oh, by the Holy Ghost. Wonderful. It is a simple test to determine who is with God and who is not. Yes, I, I, I call it the blood test. If someone shies away from the blood of Jesus and has difficulties in using his name in worship, then normally some spiritual opposition is at work. When people use the name of the Lord in vain, then, then we know that the Holy Spirit is absent. The gifts of the Spirit can only work in the right environment and atmosphere, where he is honored as God and as a person. That relates to Jesus, the Son of God, and to the Holy Spirit as a person. Let's have a look at the gifts in general and workings thereof. And the first point I would like to make is a question. How does it work? Verse 4 explains it all. Now, there are diversity, diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. In this instance, Paul speaks of nine specific gifts which are listed in this chapter. Now, he does not refer to the gifts of men uh, recorded in Ephesians 4.11, nor does he speak of administrative gifts like deacons or, or, or different talents that we have. Now, the gifts are of a supernatural nature and sets the church with these gifts above all other organizations. No grouping, no club, nothing in this world has something like the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It, it sets the church far above any other organization. This Gifts are operated by the Holy Ghost. We have a book by Norman Vincent Peale, for instance, called The Power of Positive Thinking. Now, or we have the fourth dimension of Yonki Chao. Now, the, the latent power of the mind 
is a powerful tool which can be easily mistaken as a spiritual component. Now, it, it normally is based on, on, on meditation and, and so also on visualization. We, we imagine things into existence by the power of the mind, they teach. Now, bending of spoons, levitation, moving articles without assistance, etc. And much of this teaching has entered the church in the 1980s and brought about great disappointments. It came in together with the gospel of prosperity. And I, I remember we had a young single mother as a tenant in our house in Cape Town. She struggled financially and was prepared to, to go into any direction of her Christian belief. Uh, which would help her out of her difficulties. Now, to her, the answer was to marry a rich man who could provide all things for her. Now, the church she went to was teaching that if you visualize something hard enough, God would give it to you. And when we visited her once, she said, uh, Oh, can you see the new BMW car in my garage? Oh, yes, and my new refrigerator with the double doors and the ice maker. Oh, yes, and there comes my good-looking, very rich husband right now home from his fantastic job he's got. Yes, preparing for the new holidays that we're going to. She was taught by her pastor that if she thinks it hard enough and directs her face towards her unseen desires, she'll get it. Yes. There was no car in the garage, no fridge in the kitchen, and no rich husband anywhere to be seen. Ah, oh, yes. Faith is directed towards God. Yes. And not towards our desires or towards the goods that we want to receive. Now back to our verse. The first point in this verse speaks of diversity. It is not like the fruit of the Holy Spirit, where we have one fruit and different parts. Here we have different gifts by one and the same Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And then we come to verse 5 and it says, And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. All things are done in the name of Jesus, our Lord. And it is by grace, and by grace through faith. Salvation came by grace. And so are the gifts of God, gifts of grace, grace. We will use the gift of healing as an example. And we go to Psalm 103 and verse 3, where it says, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, referring to salvation, and healeth all thy diseases, referring to healing. In one verse, in one sentence. Now here we have a verse that relates to both both themes, salvation and healing. By grace are we saved, by grace are we healed, by the same Lord. When we get to all nine gifts, we have different administrations, and the Greeks, they use this word, word um, diaconia, like a deacon, different persons being used in them. Now, the, the, the gifts are not reserved for specific persons of higher spiritual standing or higher spiritual education, but God is looking for a willing heart to be used in any of the gifts you see it's for you it's for me it's it's for everybody with a heart for god we can lay our hands upon the sick yes verse six and there are diversities of operations and here again they use for operations they use this greek word energema which has something to do with energy yes but it is the same god which works all in all. It is God who is working. It's not Belzebub. It's not the devil that does anything. And he does it with a variety of spiritual powers through the Holy Spirit. Be it the power in wisdom, or the power in knowledge, the power in discernment, in the miracle, healing, prophecy or tongues. It is always the same source of power, even if it manifests itself in a different way. Then we come to verse 7 where it says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. I like this one. The manifestation of the Spirit. Spiritual things are seen or are unseen. But here we see that the Spirit manifests a result that can be perceived with our natural ability. 
Something is not there, and then suddenly it is there by the power of God, by the grace of the Lord Jesus. The Spirit works and is manifest through a man or a woman for that purpose. Why would God use a man? We, we must remember that the body of Christ is in training for eternity. Uh, the gifts are delegated to us so faith can be exercised. It, it has nothing to do with IQ, with social standing, with wealth or beauty. Uh, God is not a respecter of persons. It is given to every man to profit with all and for all. All to receive and all to give. Gifts of the Spirit accompany our ministry to reach a lost world. That, that is the bottom line of it. Why should they believe your words? How much easier to convince a man if he is confronted with the power of God? The, uh, these signs shall follow them that believe, Jesus said. That, that they should believe him for the sake of the works that he does. If they don't believe his words, we read in, in John chapter 10, verse 37 and 38. Believe me, just for the sake of the wor works that I do, I'm healing the sick, I'm setting the captive free, I'm preaching good news. Believe me for the sake of the things that I present to you and manifest to you. Then it is also to the benefit of the believer and unbeliever. We will see that the closer we come to the end of this age, that the element of the supernatural will become more and more needed in our lives. And then we come to the first gift. It is called the word of wisdom. That's my second point. Now James chapter 1 and verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Yes. So in verse 8, the first half in 1 Corinthians 12, we read, For to one is given by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, the word of wisdom. Wisdom has been underestimated. For too long. Wisdom helps us to survive in a complicated and deceptive world. Let's take finance for instance. It, it is mostly unwise decisions that lead us into financial difficulties. It is unwise eating habits that let us suffer in many ways. In our case above it goes up a notch to the supernatural. It is when we have to make a decision beyond our word of wisdom, be beyond our understanding and, and ability, or, or if we have a, to counsel a brother or a sister, that the word of wisdom is needed. Yeah, it, it was Jesus who demonstrated this gift to us. Luke 20, 22 to 25, wonderful example. And they ask him to trick him up. Is it lawful for us to give tribute to Caesar or not? But he perceived their craftiness and said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Show me a penny. Whose image and superscription has it? And they answered and they said, Caesar's. And he said unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's and unto God the things which are God's. Here we see wisdom in action. In another place, Jesus said that if we are brought before the judges of this world for our belief's sake, that the Holy Spirit will give us the right words to speak in that hour. He will give us a gift of the word of wisdom. It happened to us this morning. We were busy praying and while we were praying, I never, I never take the phone. I, I, it, I put it on silent and or on flight mode or whatever, but I never used it. But this morning it went ting ting and I don't know why, I just took it. 
while we were praying or reading the word of God. And I opened it up and there was a sister. She says, give me a few minutes of time this morning. I need advice. What she was asking was a word of wisdom. And she says, she is in a quandary. On the one hand, she has a flat offered to her to purchase. And on the other hand, she has a desire to build a house. What should she do? And before and, and immediately the answer came to me, and I'm sure it was a word of wisdom of God, that she should buy the flat and wait to build the house. That was, it just came to me. And before I could utter this, this um, to, to my wife that was with me, that we were praying together, um, she says to me, uh, after I've read it to her, uh, uh, tell her that she should get the, um, the flat first and wait on the Lord for building the house. And what came to my mind was immediately confirmed. And I've, I, I, I phoned the sister back immediately. And I'm absolutely convinced in my heart that we gave her a word of wisdom for that moment. Yes. Until next time when we will speak again and continue with the word of knowledge. Amen. So praise the Lord and have a good day. God bless. Amen. <laughs>